2021. Let's how many, this. how many books did you finish all told? I was at 102. 102. That? 102. Which that's the broke first record. 100 book year. So I was very like pat on the back. First time that I've read a hundred plus books. That's awesome though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And what was your ridiculous total, Hannah? It's just messed up. 136. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Hannah? Um, How does that make shame. you? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> the realization that I could probably do a lot in my life if I didn't read so much. <laughs> like, I don't know, dust, clean my kids' bookshelf. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> okay. Should we start with our faves? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Definitely start with faves. And let's start with favorite. We'll do fiction because honestly, that's like what we want to talk about. And then we'll talk about the rest of it because we were supposed to, um, because we set these expectations for ourselves that nobody else cares about. That literally no one cares about. Nobody cares about. But, okay. So you go first. Favorite fiction okay. or a couple, if you could pick, because like I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up picking another one um, since we talked yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Although, did I write it down in here? Probably not. So then I'm not going to know what it is. Um, so this is the one that mm -hmm. like made my very favorite. It's Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. I love it. It's just a super fun book. It's just fun. It's this old lady who lives by herself in New York City. She's lived in New York City her whole life. And um, she doesn't have anywhere to go on New Year's Eve. And so she literally just like, goes for a walk awesome. in her New York neighborhood. And so then the whole story is her remembering these places and like yeah. what they meant to her, you know, throughout her life. Um, and yeah, it was just really fun, easy, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's like a super fun character. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was my favorite. Oh, I just, and I remember what my other one was. Um, that was my favorite nonfiction and then the other one which is historical um fiction or that was my favorite fiction fiction, fiction. i knew what you meant yeah and then my favorite historical fiction which mm -hmm. i know you know i love this book yeah you do love that book um i read it for book club this year last train istanbul um so good and yeah everybody should just read it it's just so good i just love it um and everyone in our book club loved it so it's definitely <laughs> so it's totally palatable to everybody it's not just like me obsessing over a book because that happens, yes. um, but like everyone. No, it was really good. It. it was a good book. It is really good. So um, two picks. I was going to ask you if the, the other one, the Lillian Boxfield takes a walk, is that going to become your new New Year's Eve um, book? Like, are you going to read it every you know, year? No, it really probably should. I feel like it probably should. That will be worth reading every year like that. Yeah. Yeah. So what were your favorites? If you narrowed it down to. I did. I narrowed it down to two. Okay, one nice. is a, a lighthearted, more lighthearted, yep. entertaining read. And one is like not lighthearted at all, but like a really good read. And you can probably mm -hmm. guess what they both are, or you will not be surprised at all. So the first one know. is uh, The House okay. in the Cerulean Sea, which we're going to mm -hmm. read this year for book club, which I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, just a delightful character based character driven novel which honestly I don't read that many character driven novels anymore like they're always about like saving the whole world or like these great incredible like um worlds and like that's that's wonderful and I love it but like yeah it's so good and it has like that um quirkiness that you kind of adore in fantasy sometimes um it's I think it, it would technically be in the fantasy genre but magical yeah yeah it's like a magical island so like yeah. technically but um it's not about that so yes i love this book you know i love this book this book i've recommended like a thousand times throughout this entire year and i'm super excited that we're reading that for because you've been talking about it like since you read it you've been talking about it so i'm very happy and excited that we're reading it. I'm, I'm also slightly worried now that i've like talked it up so much to you that you're gonna hate it and you're gonna be like okay you well, do that do that. i'm just gonna say like that has happened before Ooh. so um yeah we we'll, only time will tell if, if yeah. that actually um happens with this one and uh i went on a book date yesterday with a friend of mine I love and that. we were both talking about that, like, we're so glad we read it when it was, like, just out, because now everybody's talking about it all the time, and both of us would, like, just not read it on principle. <laughs> we, we tend to do that. Like, <laughs> if everybody loves it, I'm just not going to okay. read it. Been there, um, done that. So, yeah, I hear you. So, anyway, and then my other one, which is, was our favorite book club book, 
oh, okay. as well was There, There, My Tommy Orange. So good. Yes. I loved this book. I, and I don't even know really how to talk about it um, in terms of like a genre. It's just a modern fiction, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the weaving that he does within the storytelling and where it ends is so honest. Yeah. It's and and poignant and like this is stuff that people need to hear so and and yeah. being able to like walk in it in the way that he allows you to I really enjoyed it so um yeah I love this book too yeah so, I, I totally agree I think that book is amazing I, those are my those are my two those are fiction okay so should we just um talk about nonfiction real quick yeah yeah okay. you do what do you got um okay so okay I have two two nonfictions that were like least oh no are we doing favorites or are we on least favorite favorites favorite, oh, favorite. okay never mind okay we're still on favorites so my, uh, oh, why did I, I wrote my list down here, but it's like so disorganized at this point. Cause I kept adding stuff that I can't even read my, <laughs> um, it's so bad. I typed mine up. So it's like right over here on my computer screen. That was really smart. Oh my gosh. If I had like more than one monitor, but I'm so like low tech. Okay. So one of them, I know I had two, I'll have to think what the other one was. Oh no, I do know what it is. It's sitting right here next to me. That's mm. why I can't think of it. I didn't write it down. So the first one was lost city of the monkey God. Um, and that was by um, Douglas Preston. That is an amazing book. And it is about um, the, a group of people who actually go down um, into, was it Ecuador? Now I can't remember. I read it so long ago, I can't remember uh, which country it was. But anyway, it was the jungles of, of South America, might've been Mexico. And they're actually searching for this like legendary city, like oh, this okay. legendary, um, mm -hmm. the city of the monkey god, right? Um, and so it's just like, it's, it's sort of, um, in the same vein as, um, like travel. Oh, it's like, know, a like a travel, kind of like a travel, yeah, kind of like travel kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's more what it is than anything. So, you know, all the trials and tribulations, um, mm -hmm. dealing with, um, uh, rainforests, right. you know, everything is like, yeah, it's awful. There's like, you can't even like walk because there's just like so much, you know, um, so yeah. much foliage and then like the snakes are like biting your legs off. I mean, it's, it's not like, oh, it's a snake bite. It's like that thing will kill you after it eats your leg, you know, like that kind of snake. Um, and then they all get back and then they have all these health problems too, like just oh, from being in this, in right. this place. Um, hmm. So anyway, it was just really, really interesting. And like what they found, and I don't want to spoil it or anything, but like what was found was super mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and then, and the first part is actually like sort of the history of the predecessors who have like gone right. to look for um, the city of the monkey God and a little history about um, the legend of the city of the monkey mm -hmm. God. So anyway, super interesting. And I really liked it um, right at my alley because it was like archaeology kind of. Yeah, stuff. yeah, that makes perfect sense. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, Lost City of the Monkey God. And then this was the other one that I picked um, was Barracoon oh. by Zora Neale Hurston. This is an ethnography and it's amazing. It, it's just I don't amazing. think I knew. I don't think I knew that was an ethnography. Yeah, she actually is a trained anthropologist. Really? Yeah. Yep. Huh. Yep. I didn't know that. I will have I'm to. You last living actually i think it says right on the front um the story of the last black cargo is like is the subtitle oh. he was the last living um enslaved person that they wow. knew about, obviously at the time that she was writing which was, this was in um 1927 wow she visited him um and wrote up his ethnography so that i will have to read that i need yeah. to you're gonna have to send me your list you do need to type up your list and send it to me so i can put some of this stuff on my i will never ending to read list i know right <laughs> for both of us um so mine interestingly enough neither of mine are historical surprise no Why not at all surprising so i also have two non-fictions that i loved and mm -hmm. um the first one uh, I, okay this is in no order like these are just so different in many ways that they're in no order but the first one is called the undocumented Ameri undocumented americans okay by, and I'm Carla Cornejo Villavicencio. Okay. Villavicencio. Lionel has said it to me a hundred times, and I, but it is oh, so good. So um, she is writing, I mean, about undocumented Americans and their stories, and um, she's traveling all over. 
the country and it's partially her story and the story of her parents, but also like all of these other um, really, it was, it was a hard read for me because of um, my family um, that I've married into, but like, so the chapters are like Stanton Island, Ground Zero, Miami, Flint, Cleveland, and New Haven. So like in these geographical places, she's kind of speaking to um, and telling the story of undocumented Americans. And it is, I mean, it is a National Book Award finalist. I just like yeah. to, but it is, We this is one of the ones I read for um, the, the anti-racist, anti-racist book. What, like the book fest that we went to? Book actually. fest. That's what I was like, all I could call it was book fair because I have Scholastic in my head. I'm like, it's not a book <laughs> fair. That's not what it's called. But yes, the, um, the anti-racist book fest, was. this was one of them that I read for okay. that. Yeah. And then the other one, which I read before that, but was also there, is Eloquent Rage by Brittany Cooper, who I love. Love her. Um, love, love, love. Love, love, love this book. Um, yeah. Love her voice. Yeah. Read it on, or listened to it on Audible. Picked the book up as well. Have yeah. kind of read different chapters of it. A Black feminist discovers her superpower. Have used it in some of my sermons, even yeah. like some because because there is a real um, spiritual connection that she does through this as well. And yeah, I love, 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 love that book. So those were my two favorite nonfictions. Very good. Good picks on that. Yeah. You, now we're going to talk about our least favorite. How about I go first? Because I think I have less than you. I only have one. Okay. I actually have a really hard time coming up with least favorite books usually because so many books are so well loved and I like value people's love of books, like yeah. above my own objective opinions of certain things. <clears throat> but this book to me, and partially it's because it is so popular. I'm a hundred percent sure it's called The Midnight Library. By yes, you told me about it because I was gonna read it and you're like, don't read it, don't read by, it. I'm like, read it, never mind. By Matt Hay. Yep. It is one of of all of my books on Goodreads. It tells you like when you do your year in numbers, right? Like the one that's most shelved and the one that's least shelved. This was the most shelved of the books that I've read this year on Goodreads. And I understand why people like it and love it and find great connection to it. I am just in a place in my life where I wanted to just be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Figure out how to be happy where you are. You need a whole book to tell you that. So, but that's about my journey. But in terms of like books that I ended up finishing and like forced myself to finish, there is one that I did not, which you're going to talk about. Um, I couldn't put it on my list because I didn't finish it. You didn't finish um, it. But of all, I did. I did, I, mm, it was a, it was a struggle to finish it. And I did actually, I think I listened to it on Audible, thankfully. So oh, yeah. I might have not listened to some of the middle of it as well, very well, but I, yes, it just, it, but I do get that it hits a chord for a lot of people who are in need of that particular chord being plucked and being given a new vision. And I just, yeah, not my cup of tea not or hot tea. chocolate is the case. Maybe. Yeah. Mint hot chocolate, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go ahead. So mine, as you already know, mm -hmm. um, is my least favorite, Terry. Laura Incognita by Sarah Wheeler. Yeah. yeah. So we read this book for book club um, as I think it must have been our Antarctic. Yeah, it must have been our Antarctica yeah. book. Yeah. Um, on our journey around the world and our book club. And that book, I feel like by about halfway through that book, I was just reading that book so I could come up with more fodder to like be mean about it in book club. Like there was like no other reason to read it at that point. Like I just hit that point where it's like, okay, I'm going to finish this because A, it's my book club. So I kind of have to finish the book and B, because the more I read, the more I'm going to be able to like complain about it and have like legitimate um, reasons. Like, reasons for being like, this book was trash. Um <laughs> To be fair, there, being said, there, there were people in the book club who liked yeah, it. Who yeah. liked it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Just want to, got to put no. that out there. That there are people who do like that book. Just who absolutely like, really liked the book, liked her journey, how yeah. it was written up, the whole thing. Enjoyed um, her voice. Mm -hmm. I did yep. not enjoy her voice. Nor did I. Um, I, yeah, I, there were so many things that 
I did not like in that book. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I don't necessarily need to get into it on this, on this video, but yeah. it, it definitely, um, for me, there was nothing like redeeming. There was not like, okay, I didn't like it, but right. And then like a, a good thing that like helped get me right. through it. I didn't have any of that, like, oh, but, but this one thing, you know, right. um, it just felt like a slog. It felt like there's no, there was no continuity for me. Mm -hmm. um, everybody just got like their name mentioned and then she moved on um, a place mentioned and then moved on. Like it was all, it felt like, here's the thing, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. There was no connection um, yeah. tissue for yeah. me, the way yeah. that I was yeah. reading it. So um, that was definitely my least favorite book club book. And it was definitely my least favorite book that I actually managed to get through all the way, um, sure. to this year. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, most likely to recommend. Ah, yes. I also do have two because I am that person, but yeah. one is fiction and one is nonfiction. So again, I give myself like the ability to like, you know, own that. I, I only have one. So if you want me to go, I can just go. Oh, you go ahead. And quick. Um, mm -hmm. The one that I would, and I have recommended to a number of people already um, that I read this year, and I'm like, this is profound, this is amazing, mm -hmm. is A Women, Race, and Class by Angela Davis. Yes, which is on my to-do list, to read list, as soon as mom gives it, is done with it, and gets it back. Is done with it, yeah. Because I, like, I sent it to you guys, I'm like, you have to read this. Mm -hmm. We talked about it in our abolition class that we did yep. this year. It has so many applications, and yes. it's it's brilliant, and it's very readable. Yep. Um yep. The chapters are really like, for me, I read it a chapter at a time because they're, they're thematic. So each chapter has its yeah. own um, topic. And for me, like I read a chapter a day when I read it. And so I think there's only like eight or 10 chapters. It's, mm -hmm. it's not um, a, a big fat book. It's a skinny little thing. Yeah. But it gave me a chance to really like think about what she's saying and like how right. this is the reality um, right. for people who do not look like me. Yeah. Um, do not have the economic situation that I have. Um, and to really absorb it and think about it and contemplate that um, in a way that was meaningful, yeah. you know, rather than yeah. sort of like pounding it out and like getting through it. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, it's probably like number one on books that I read this year for sure of stuff that I would recommend to people. Um, and yeah. it's Angela Davis, so you know it's it's going to be brilliant, right. amazing, right. you know. Right. But it was very readable and accessible. I felt right like, and and yeah. relevant. Un yes. Sadly, yes. incredibly yes. relevant still. Yes. Right. And she wrote it in like 1980, I think, or something yeah. like that. So exactly. yeah, yeah. So and actually, in line with that, is actually mm -hmm. um in, uh, an anthology of mine that um we also are going to be reading for <laughs> our book club this year. But you are your best thing by Tarana Burke and uh, Brenda Brown. Well edited by Toronto Burke and Brené Brown because it is a, a group of essays and so yeah I, I and I love a good essay I love essays I like anthologies I find um I find them so fascinating it is like these little windows and peeks into people's lives and passions like these ones particularly into their lives and like the way in which they are and being vulnerable in this particular case because it's vulnerability shame resilience in the black experience mm -hmm. so um but being allowed just that glimpse of that, but even in other essays too, like even if it's their passion or just something that they thought about once and then like just did a deep dive on and like just being able to kind of see that in people, I find that really, um, really connective and kind of a beautiful gift that um, you don't necessarily get in fiction, right? Like, um, so I, I really love this one. I would, I recommend that one. And then the other one, the other, the fiction one, other than the house in the Cerulean Sea, um, is actually a YA called Station Eleven by, hold on, let me get her name, um, Emily St. John Mendel. Oh, okay. And it's, I, I recommend it with, a tr with a content warning that it is about, um, an epidemic, like a glo a pandemic. So that's like the flu. And she wrote this before 2020. So, but it is really, it was really just a really interesting. And actually there's a, I think HBO, I think HBO is doing a mini series on it right now. Okay. Um, that's coming out as well, but um, I really enjoyed it. I, I found it really fascinating and a really cool thought experiment. Mm -hmm. 
without it being, I'm just going to go into my least recommend, The Stand by Stephen King, which I know everybody loves and it's fine. I like, whatever. These are like books about the same sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Station Mm -hmm. 11, like a normal human sized book. Yeah. The Sand. never ending like what a quarter like maybe two like a halfway to like maybe two thirds I'm like can everybody just die so we can be done like can everybody just die so if you want to read a book as a thought experiment on um global pandemic yeah I would personally recommend station 11 and I would never recommend the stand (laughs) Me not recommending The Stand, though, has so much to do with how, who I am as a reader and not at all about, I mean, I do know that people really, well, because I read that book because I read his newer one, um, The Institute, and I like read it in a day and a half. I mean, it's a chunk of a book, yeah. and I was, but his writing is incredible. Like, he's very vivid, and his character building is very good, um, and like, you're just like, you're interested, and so I asked my social media people mm-hmm. community like what's another Stephen King book like I, that was my first Stephen King book I ever read I was like oh you have to read the stand you have to read the stand I'm like okay I'll read the stand and a new miniseries was coming out right like yeah so I was like okay cool not that I'm gonna watch that because I'm not gonna watch that but it's not I read it. the book and that was I bad. didn't have to watch I had to watch it because of course George loves the stand I've never read the stand but I had to watch the new miniseries it yeah yeah and I one, it is an extremely long book, which as if anybody who's ever followed us before or listened to me talk knows I have commitment issues and big yeah. fat books are not my thing. Yeah. They are more your thing than my They're thing. kind of my thing, yeah. Um, but, and also I just was done. Like I, I did not find the characters enduring. I didn't care if anybody lived. I really just preferred if everybody died so I could move on with my life. Um, but that, I mean, yeah, but I also do recognize that that book is probably a, like a classic in many ways. Yeah. Um, and one that has a deep, is deeply rooted in people's like reading journeys. So I, I honor that and say, if you haven't yet read it, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Watch the, watch one of the two miniseries. See if you're interested in those characters. If you are, then read it then read it yeah but that's mm-hmm. my opinion anyway i hated that book <laughs> no you did okay your turn i will you stop berating this thing what are we even on i don't know what we're talking about now. you're uh one you would never recommend oh yes may never recommend so this one was like so weird mm. um this book that i would never recommend to anyone i actually kind of want somebody else to read it who's maybe like smarter or like more into weird stuff than i am yeah, so they can tell me what this book was about it was called white for witching um, and it was by Helen um, Oyemi. I'm not sure how to say her last name. Um, and it was like on all of these like sort of modern, um, you know, like gothic lit mm-hmm. lists, right? And I right. love reading kind of like this gothic stuff and like the fall and puts me in the mood. And so I just got this one from the library. It's a skinny little thing, yeah. um, yeah. which is why it was no problem to read it, even though it like literally never made sense to me at all. I was just sort of like always waiting. You know right, how like you know, sense. it's not that long. Yeah. You're like you're just waiting for it all to like start to make sense. Right. I got to the end. And I'm like, I got I got nothing for this. I have no idea what this book was about because it's like about this young girl, um, and like her mom dies, right? Uh-huh. And so then it's like her journey for sure. But then there's this the other part of it is like this house that she lives in is like it's not haunted, but it sort of is. Um, but okay. it does like weird things. Like the house is its own character. Mm-hmm. like in the in the book and like it it like has its own parts where it's talking right okay um anyway it was very strange very odd um and honestly I got to the end I'm like okay I don't I don't really know what that what that book was about hmm. or how it started or how it ended hmm. and I both started and ended it <laughs> so probably 
not, not, not one you'd recommend isn't like, hey, some other than like, can somebody read this? Like, yeah, I feel tell like me that I'm not I crazy. To read it. Like I want my friend Anna Marie to read it because she's like very um like I don't know, she like understands weird stuff. She was like a lit major. Oh and she got like a master's in literature. So I feel like maybe she would be able to like get it and then she could tell me about it, or like you might be able to get it and tell me about it. But I wouldn't recommend it. Like, like this is amazing. You have to read right. it. I'd be like, this one's a weird one. And if you want to read it and tell me what it's about, that'd be great. <laughs> like that's like that's what it, that's the recommendation. <laughs> if you read it, you have to call me and tell me what it's about. <laughs> yeah, because I read it and I'm like, I got nothing. We are to the glad I read it, but don't need to ever read it again. Yeah. <laughs> Which I had a lot. So how many do you have? Oh, I only had one. Oh, I had three. Um, so oh, go ahead. Okay. Okay, well, mine was really long. Oh, <laughs> no, it was the autobiography of Malcolm X. The, the one oh, that I yeah, yeah, yeah. And it isn't like I don't want to read it again because it was bad or anything. Like, it wasn't right. that. I listened right. to it on Audible and it was narrated by Lawrence Fishburne. Ooh, so, like, yeah, the whole yeah. experience of it was actually like amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. Like, I love right. listening to Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. He's fantastic. Um, he really he gave a voice to a person that I've never really right learned about right like yeah. we always learned about MLK and it right. was always sort of like MLK versus Malcolm um, X. Yeah. you know yeah. Malcolm X it was always sort of this like antagonistic relationship that like we yeah. learned and right. internalized right. even though like that was not really like the way it oh. was but like this mm-hmm. is the history that we get you know in grade school um and so I was super interested to actually like hear Malcolm X in yeah. Malcolm X's words. And this was yeah. his autobiography as it was related to Alex Haley, who mm. wrote Roots, of course. Um, so it's brilliant writing. Um, right. And I loved hearing Malcolm X talk about his experience in his own words. Yes. I think there is, ext- there is a Such lot of value. value in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that it, it's a book that I absolutely 125% am so glad that I yeah. took the time to read yep. slash listen to. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Highly recommend it. If you like want to know about Malcolm X, I actually thought it was really very well done. I love listening to Lawrence Fish and, but it was, it was absolutely worth it yeah. for, for sure. Um, my three, and these are books that I get, I would recommend to people to read. Yeah. And I think that they're important reads, but they're ones that are usually so painful to, and like, and create such empathy and, and like the heartache that I can never read them again. Like, or if I did, it would have to be really for a particular reason, like a book club or like I was going to talk about it or something like that. So I did have three of them and they're from very different things. One's the last girl um, by Nadia Murad, which is actually, and this was a thing I didn't know about, was actually about um, the religious minorities in Iraq and the horror that was, um, and the atrocities committed upon those communities um, during the Iraq war. And it's her story of being trafficked a couple of times. And, um, but it was really an an interesting point in history as well. And like modern history, like stuff that I was alive for and just had no yeah. um, window into or understanding of like, you know, you think of war and yes, there's gonna be atrocities, but really putting names and faces and people's lives behind it is always super painful, but also really important, I think. Um, and in that same vein, I just finished for a book club thing, um, a book called Enrique's Journey by Sonia Nazario, which is about uh, the journey from Central America to um, to the United States of of this one particular boy, but of, you know, of that, um, of those migrant miners who are um, crossing Mexico in order to try and get into the um, United States and and that process and what that looks like. And Sonia Nazario actually took the journey as well. And yeah, it was, it's a really, I thought it was really well done. I think she is really honest about both the journey itself, as well as what happens in America. Um, and for people who are living here, oftentimes undocumented, um, and what that looks like and how that isn't such a glorious um, win as we sometimes, I think, 
think about it that way. So that was a really good one. And then the last one, which I do have, and I, I said, I, well, I won't read this one again. I probably will. I have kept it on my shelf, but this is um, Half the Sky by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wudun. And, um, and it's about women and girls and the atrocities across the world that continue to happen to women and girls. And, um, and the ways in which we as a society continue to perpetuate an environment and a culture that allows for such. Um, and so again, difficult to read, glad I read it. And yeah, those were my three. But again, I would recommend any of those books. Um, I think they're all very well done, very different. But um, yeah. can you tell the sun came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, little sunshine right in your face there. Little sunshine, yeah. Super good lighting. Soak up a little vitamin D, you might need it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Get my happy, happy juice.